Hello and welcome to this lesson on the compound interest formula. Compound interest. Uh, now, compound interest is when you're earning a little bit of money for uh, putting money into an account to do with banking. Um, you can also get compound interest uh, on uh, a loan, so when you borrow money. So you might invest money and you'll be earning interest, gaining it, or you might borrow money and you'll have to pay interest. Um, and this topic is very, very closely linked to geometric sequences. Uh, when we multiply by the same thing each time, a common ratio. Any compound interest um, calculations could be treated as a geometric sequence. It's also very closely linked with exponential growth and decay. A lot of the formula we're using here is just as valid for exponential growth and decay. For example, the population of rabbits on an island increases by 7% each year, etc. So you may see some similarities in these questions. But we're going to focus on uh, talking about money and compound interest paid or earned on money. Um, so here we go. This is the formula. If you are studying IB, when you go to your formula booklet, you'll have a look and you'll find arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences, and then compound interest. So this is the formula we'll find. Now, I'm just going to ignore this K, the number of compounding periods per year. We'll come to that in a minute. Let's ignore that for the moment. So this formula now works if interest is paid just once per year. At the end of each year, we earn interest or we pay interest. So I have PV is the present value, sometimes known as the principal amount, the initial amount that I put in. Then I've got this 1 plus the interest rate divided by 100 uh, to the power of n, and n is the number of years. Let's look at an example for that. So, how much would I have in my account if I invested $20,000 at 3% APR? APR is annual, so yearly percentage rate. And I'm going to do that for 18 years. I want to know how much is in my account after those 18 years. So, all I need to do is substitute into this formula. So, we have our PV, our print present value, or our principal amount, is 20,000. Then I've got 1 plus 3 over 100, because my interest rate is 3%, and then the number of years is 18. I've just taken those numbers. I've got my principal value is 20,000. I've got the number of years is 18, and I've got our percent is 3%. Now, for shorthand here, 3 over 100 is 0 0.03, so I can shorten this quickly to 1.03, if you like, or you can type your calculator as a fraction like that. And when we calculate that, we should get $34,048.66. And that's it. All we're doing is substituting, uh, identifying what the values are, substituting into the formula. Right, here's three for you to try. Uh, on that same thing, so I suggest you pause the video, try those three, get used to using your calculator for these, and identifying the right numbers to put in the formula. So pause the video now, and I'll give you the answers in a sec. Pause. And here are the answers now. So the first one, we took 30,000 multiplied by 1 plus 4 over 100, which I shortened to 1.04, to the power of 12, etc. I'm sure you can check those answers uh, and go back. All right, moving on. Uh, let's bring that K in here, the number of compounding periods per year. This isn't as scary as it sounds, but in reality, you don't get paid interest after every year, or not often. Most uh, banks and uh, things, they like to either pay or receive interest every month, is the most common one. You could pay weekly, you can pay daily even, depending on who you're dealing with. Um, so here's an example. How much will I have in my bank account after 18 months if I invest $9,000 annual percentage rate, 3.5% compounded monthly? Well, let's just substitute all those values in. And all we have to know is that this K is going to be the number of compounding periods per year. Sounds a bit confusing. All it means is, if it's monthly, 12. There's 12 months in a year. 
Okay, so we substitute those values in. 9,000 multiplied by 1 plus 3.5, that's our rate, percentage rate, APR. And then we say 100 times 12 on the bottom, and 12 times 1.5 is the uh, sort of number of time periods, really, because we've got one and a half years. 18 months is one and a half years. Now, this is actually, treating it as k times n can be a bit more confusing than treating it as just the number of time periods. If we're doing 18 months, well, 12 times 1.5, 12 times a year and a half, we could just call that 18. Okay, so I think this k times n is useful, but knowing that that's just the number of time periods is also keeps things a bit more simple. So we've now just got to set this up in our calculator, work carefully, and you should find it's $9,484.40. Uh, there you go. So here's one for you to try now. Uh, and then hopefully, if you've got it right, you can say, I understand the compound interest formula. So pause the video, have a go, and pause. Here's the answer. I'm substituting in these values here three times 12 months on the t on this one, which is 36 time periods, 5,389. There you go. Hope you learned something. Uh, thanks for watching.